folks. Well, here we are. The summer season is here, and so are those pesky parasites. In this video, I'm going to switch gears and talk about something that needs to be addressed. Now, I discuss a lot about the dangers of Mother Nature, but I haven't quite touched on the subject of ticks just yet. So let's begin. Ticks are a growing, consistent, and pervasive threat to public health and outdoor recreation in the U.S. These tiny, blood-feeding arachnids are found in nearly every region of the country, including national and state parks. As outdoor enthusiasts increasingly visit these parks to enjoy sweet mother nature, it is essential to understand the types, habitats, and risks associated with ticks. This report provides a detailed overview of ticks in national and state parks, including their locations, types, dangers, and preventative measures that you can take. Now here are some statistics that I thought I'd share with you. From 2019 to 2022, state and local health departments reported an average of over 46,000 tick-borne disease cases to the CDC. However, the CDC only receives about 35,000 reported cases of Lyme disease each year, the most common tick-borne disease, while an estimated 475,000 new cases are diagnosed in the U.S. annually. This is likely due to the difficulty of diagnosing Lyme disease symptoms and lack of access to health care. The majority of ticks can be active when temperatures are 4 degrees Celsius and above, including during mild winter days. They can survive the winter by hiding under snow, leaf litter, and brush. Ticks are attracted to warm, moist areas of the body, such as the thigh, upper back, scalp, calf, upper arm, behind the knee, armpit, neck, and lower back. They feed on human beings, dogs, mice, birds, rabbits, and deer, and can affect their hosts with pathogens and disease-causing bacteria while climbing from one mammal to the other. It's even possible for a tick to carry three different diseases at once. Ticks in general can live for about two to three years, but spend most of their lives outside of a host or nest. During their lifetime, they'll only have up to three blood meals, which is kind of surprising to me. The chances of getting Lyme disease from a tick depend on three factors. The tick species, where it came from, and how long it's been feeding. The probability ranges from zero to roughly 50% if you get bit by one of these ticks. There are over 900 species of ticks worldwide, but only about 90 species are found in the U.S. Now the most common species of ticks in state and national parks are black-legged ticks, lone star ticks, Western black-legged ticks, brown dog ticks, and the American dog tick. But their distribution and abundance vary depending on factors such as climate, vegetation, and wildlife presence. Some of the most common locations where ticks can be found include state and national parks, forests, grasslands, and even urban areas. Some of the most affected state and national parks include Acadia National Park in Maine, Great Smoky Mountains National Park in Tennessee, North Carolina, Yellowstone National Park in Wyoming, Yosemite National Park in California. State parks in Connecticut, Maine, Massachusetts, New York, Pennsylvania, and Virginia can also harbor ticks. Forests in general are a common habitat for ticks, particularly in areas with dense underbrush and leaf litter. 
They can also be found in grasslands, particularly in areas with tall grasses and wild flowers. While less common, ticks can also be found in urban areas, particularly in parks and green spaces. Now, as I mentioned earlier, ticks pose a significant threat to public health due to their ability to transmit diseases to humans. Some of the most common diseases transmitted by ticks include Lyme disease, anaplasmosis, ehrlichiosis, babesiosis, and southern tick-associated rash illnesses. Preventing tick bites is crucial for avoiding tick-borne illnesses. Some effective preventative measures include wearing protective clothing, using insect repellent, conducting regular tick checks, removing attached ticks properly, and having situational awareness while you're out in Mother Nature. Now, if you happen to find a tick attached to your body or family member's body, it is essential to remove them promptly and correctly to prevent disease transmission. Here are some steps to follow. First, use fine-tipped tweezers to grasp the tick as close to the skin as possible. Next, pull upward with steady pressure to remove the tick from the skin. Do not twist or jerk the tick as this can cause mouth parts to break off and remain in the body. Clean the bite area with soap and water. Now, if you begin to show symptoms of a tick bite, it is essential to seek medical attention promptly. Treatment for this may include antibiotics, antiparasitic medication, pain management, and other resources. Now, by understanding the types of ticks, their habitats, and the risks associated, outdoor enthusiasts can take steps to prevent tick bites and avoid tick-borne illnesses. Remember to always wear protective clothing, use insect repellent, conduct regular tick checks, remove attached ticks promptly and correctly, and seek medical attention if symptoms develop after a tick bite. So next time you find yourselves itching to get outdoors, well you may want to consider the information that I've shared in this video first. I've known too many folks that have been affected by these parasites, and I just wouldn't feel right if I didn't cover it. So there you go. Thanks for watching, folks, and you'll be hearing from me soon.